There are countless reasons why someone may decide to train in martial arts. That said, one of the top and most common reasons is so that they can learn moves that can protect them from harm or even potentially save their life. If you are interested in taking up a martial arts discipline for its self-defense techniques, it's crucial to understand that some martial arts disciplines are definitely more effective than others in fending off violent physical attacks. In this video, we are going to list just seven of the best of these disciplines. But before we do this, remember to give us a thumbs up and a quick click on our subscribe button to get more videos like this one and support Brutal TV. Thanks! But for now, let's get started with our list. First on our list is Krav Maga. There is a simple yet really good reason that this official self-defense system of the Israeli Defense Forces is dubbed as the art of staying alive. It works. Though it may appear complex, its techniques are designed to be simple and easily executed. For this reason, practically anyone regardless of size, strength, or level of fitness can take it up. Krav Maga combines moves from various other martial arts styles, such as punches from Western boxing, karate kicks and knees, Brazilian jiu-jitsu's ground fighting, as well as bursting that has been adapted from the ancient Chinese martial arts Wing Chun. What makes Krav Maga so effective when it comes to self-defense is its emphasis on reality-based training where the main goal is to neutralize the attacker as fast as possible. There are no set rules, and unlike many other disciplines, you are encouraged to execute defensive and offensive moves simultaneously in order to protect yourself from harm. Next on the list is Muay Thai, sometimes referred to as Thai boxing. This celebrated combat sport of Thailand is a dauntingly ruthless martial arts discipline that works effectively when used as a self-defense system. This discipline is known as the art of eight limbs, as it is characterized by the combined use of fists, elbows, knees, and shins. Likely the most effective part of Muay Thai training for street fights is the clinch. This is all about taking control of your opponent's head. Once in control of their head, you have control of their entire body. From there, you can do so much. You can throw them, knee them, all in a safe standing position and from very close range. Next, we go to Western boxing. Although those who are not familiar with boxing would argue that boxing is not a martial arts discipline, its practitioners would beg to differ. There is much more to boxing than punching each other's face until someone decides to give up. In boxing, you learn to deliver a variety of punches from different ranges with precision as well as how to effectively block or evade an attack. Unlike many other combat disciplines, it also emphasizes body conditioning through sparring, preparing the body for combat. Additionally, boxing training helps to sharpen awareness. This enables boxers to be able to react quickly, make fast decisions, and choose the right moves to execute during a fight. Next up, we have the Russian martial art called Sambo. This discipline was founded in the Soviet Union in the 1920s. At that time, the Soviet military needed a training system that would improve the fighting abilities of its members. After 10 years of development, various combat styles were put together like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Judo, and wrestling to form Sambo. The word Sambo means self-defense without weapons. The main goal of the system is to stop the armed or unarmed enemy in the fastest way. What is so special about Sambo is that it represents one of the first mixed martial arts techniques ever. The style originally has two forms, Sport Sambo and Combat Sambo. Sport Sambo is a mixture of catch wrestling and judo techniques. The main focus is on getting powerful takedowns and finishing the opponent on the ground. Combat Sambo is a military version that combines elements of striking and grappling. During the stand-up, fighters can throw various Muay Thai and boxing techniques. Also, the combat version utilizes soccer kicks, groin kicks, and headbutts, 
along with all submission moves. We are now at the halfway mark, so just a reminder to like this video and subscribe to Brutal TV for more top quality fighting videos. Now back to self-defense. It's fair to say that Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is one of the most effective self-defense martial arts in the history of combat sports. Developed during the 1920s, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is a ground-based art that includes various chokeholds and joint locks as a way to defeat the enemy. The main focus of the system is to allow a much smaller person to put on a strong resistance and defeat much bigger attackers. This discipline is built on a judo base and embraces the stand-up aspect of fighting. Instead of striking, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu fighters learn how to advance to the ground as soon as possible. They can do this by executing various judo throws, trips, and wrestling techniques. Once on the ground, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu fighters use different scrambling techniques like sweeps to secure the dominant position. From the side control or a full mount, a fighter will proceed on executing many finishing techniques. Next, we have Filipino martial arts. This discipline is a mixture of both Western and Eastern martial arts styles. The Philippine soil is famous for its violent history and conflicts. Throughout history, Filipinos were under constant threat and involved in many wars. To protect themselves, they have developed many armed and unarmed self-defense skills. Interestingly, Filipinos learned how to adopt only the most effective skills from the best martial arts. As a result, their system focuses on hand-to-hand, -hand, stick and knife fighting. Overall, many people believe that Filipino martial arts cover all aspects of fighting. At long range, a fighter can perform different kicking techniques or use the tip of the stick. At middle range, Filipinos apply boxing and Muay Thai techniques, such as elbows and knees, or use the body of their weapons. And the short range distance is perfect for biting, eye poking, and various grappling techniques. Alternatively, fighters can use the bottom of the weapons to deliver devastating blows. Like Krav Maga, Filipino martial arts are entirely focused on self-defense. Our last discipline on the list is wrestling. The most noteworthy aspect of wrestling is its training in takedowns and takedown defenses. Wrestling, like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, is ground-based and you don't really want to go to the ground in a street fight. But this should not disqualify wrestling as an extremely effective, versatile skill set to have in relation to street fighting. Most noteworthy in its use of leverage, similar to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, in that it does not always rely on strength and size, one can use leverage to throw and submit a bigger, stronger opponent. Wrestling and throwing someone to the ground is more instinctual than striking, which is to say it is more common response to physical altercations. It's safe to assume most aggressors in a street scenario are not trained and therefore more likely to rely on instincts than skills. That's our list of seven defensive martial arts. Which do you think is the best technique? Or is there another discipline that you think is better? Tell us in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to Brutal TV for more top fighting videos just like this one. Thanks for watching.